Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I wanted to talk about something that is both gaming related and kind of coaching related because it's very personality focused. And um, that is uh, another four kind of section um, kind of breakdown of how people interact, what their personalities are composed of, things like that. You know, stuff that can be compared to, to kind of disc over here or even the DVEI stuff that I've talked about before whereby we've, we've got both, um, in this case, we've got actives and passives um, versus people versus task focus or person versus situation focus. Um, but with the, uh, the thing that we want to talk about today, which I'm sure you guys saw as the thumbnail, and that is Bartle's Taxonomy, which was developed by, um, I think his name was Richard Bartle? Yes, Richard Bartle, who co-created um, MUDs, which are multi-user dungeons, which are kind of a, a text adventure precursor to a lot of kind of modern RPG um, kind of online multiplayer experiences, be they MMORPGs, be they um, kind of more cooperative uh, focused games. You know, the, 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 the MUDs were the beginning of those kind of things. And uh, as a result, it's one of these things that always interests me because especially as I play an awful lot of online games um, obviously a game that does well is going to have at least something for for everyone and if it doesn't have that then potentially it's going to suffer and that was a large lorry going by outside and I'm really sorry if that came through on the audio but there you go um, in which case I want to go through the different types here because obviously we've got uh, as you can see on the diagram here we've got acting versus interacting and players versus world. And we'll go through what those things mean first and then we'll go through the, the different types. So in regards to um, kind of acting it's very much more the acting on something, the going out and imposing themselves on something in their either in their environment or in the people that they're around whilst the the interacting is as it would suggest you know coming in and dealing with things on a more even footing going in and and uh, directly um, working with or around something in the environment instead of just purely imposing themselves on it and uh, as a result though it's really interesting to see how these player types kind of break down when it comes to um, the, the various different types of multiplayer games that we have, the fact that games have become more and more multiplayer um, to, to huge extents in like the last few years especially, where kind of single player, more story based or cooperative titles seem to be taking a back seat, you're, you're having multiplayer only or PvP only titles being released as full games that are that are kind of 50 60 quid if not more and um, as a result taking a look at this and seeing using this as a kind of tool to see how these games do whether or not they offer enough for everybody or whether or not they are very deliberately streamlining their audience or whether or not they're not deliberately doing it but they're doing it anyway and so let's take a look at who falls into these different categories here. So we'll start off with the killers. And now these are fairly, this is fairly obvious. This is your, your ferocious PvP guy. Yeah. Or the guy in the dungeon that you're, you're doing that always wants to just speed run it and will shit on your, on, on you and harass you and yell and scream and do all of those crappy things to you. Um, kind of just, just to get their way. Yeah. These are the people that will impose themselves on other players. And that's what they want that's what they get out of it the unfortunate thing is you also get a lot of the worst types of people here as well to one extent or another because the people that go with this tend to be the ones that purely want to impose the ones that purely want to win over other players and so that will include people who are uh, cheating and hacking and stuff like that as well because it gives them the advantage over other people that they want and that that can obviously be a problem but uh, at the same time, it's just an unfortunate thing with games at the moment, especially where, where you've... Apparently everything in the world outside wants to talk to me today. Um, but the, the interesting thing about this is that it doesn't matter if you're a good sport or a bad sport, 
in regards to this, it tends to be the people who are most invested and most kind of almost ferocious with their pursuit of, of in kind of imposing themselves or or provoking other players um, in, into direct conflict. You know, it's that act, again, it's acting on, so it's it's imposing on, it's it's doing something to rather than receiving any kind of interaction back. And as a result, you know, it, it can be both very easy to deal with these players and also very difficult. But in the easy sense, if you've only got a PvP only game that has been released, then obviously that's all there is to do and these players are going to be the majority. Yeah, the ones that are there to fight in this kind of modern day gladiatorial arena um, and impose them on, on one another continuously. And as a result, yes, you do get a lot of toxicity in those communities. You know, if you go to any um, any MOBA or, or even um, uh, God knows how many of the, the shooters and things, you will get these people who get incredibly salty, who get incredibly upset over nothing, over a game, over um, things that, that really don't and shouldn't bother them as much as they do, but it's because they're not being able to impose themselves, it's because they're being prevented from, from doing what they want and being allowed to just purely do what they want. Um, in, in that kind of setting. Now obviously in some places these guys are also because they want to impose they also tend to be the most vocal minorities and when you have game developers who listen either too much or to too small a section of the community that part of their community is probably going to be made up by an awful lot of people like this and as a result of it especially in games that have large elements of kind of being better than each other or direct competition with one another then you're going to kind of run straight into this problem where the feedback that you're getting is going to be from the vocal minority that want to have their say that want to to impose themselves on the game on the community on whoever else because they're these people that will will stand out and they will aggressively attack and continue to do just that until they get their way and um, as a result you know this is as said both either a really easy group to manage because you can just go well here's your pvp space go and kill each other or it can be really difficult because these guys can take up so much time when being such a small number of people and it can be kind of really tough to deal with i mean when i've been running kind of tabletop games i've come across some people who are like this who want to impose who always want to have their say who want at times to attack other players characters when or in a in a more table top based setting in a more tabletop based game there's a lot more focus on collaboration and and working through the story together and so having these people at a table for me has been difficult yeah but then Looking at that as you, you scale it up into other games, especially big multiplayer titles like MMOs or, or games like Overwatch and so on and so forth, you know, that, are, that are, have huge communities where there's an awfully large component of kind of direct confrontation with other players, you've, you've got to kind of be very careful with this group because they are the ones who will continually attack. They are the ones who will continually try and do things and, and kind of push themselves on other people and that can be a problem both in terms of community and in terms of the actual game. Um, moving on to the next one we'll move just just around clockwise we've got the the other acting um, uh, kind of set of individuals who are uh, much more world focused though where, where the killers are focused on doing it to people the achievers want to do it to the game they want to do it in the world of the game and as a result, they, they're competitive, sure, but it's more that they tend to enjoy beating challenges or kind of achieving goals and making sure that they feel rewarding, you know, you know that they feel rewarded for it. They, these are the people who will make a big deal out of the gear that they get or the amount of achievement points that they have or, you know, all of those kind of things. Um, you know, there's there's much larger element of going into the world and completing your list of goals and as a result you know that can be all well and good that can be absolutely fine but obviously this can still kind of become 
a little more um, kind of toxic over time, especially if you've got systems that actively, ex you know, that, that promote the active exclusion of individuals based on their achievements. For example, things like gear scores or things like um, uh, the, the mastery system in Guild Wars 2, where if you don't have all of the masteries of a certain type or if you haven't kind of worked your way through and gained everything, then potentially there are going to be things that you are going to struggle with. And as a result, people will not want you around if you haven't completed those achievements, if you haven't completed those those goals. And as a result, it can be... Uh, it's not so tricky to handle achievers because obviously they're goal orientated so you, 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 and they want to work within the world still. So as long as you give them those those goals and things, then that's great. But the problem is that then they're, they're still much more focused on acting on the the world and not necessarily interacting with it. They want to complete their goal, have their way, get their reward. And so as a result, where you see um, kind of the, the, for example, when I was in World of Warcraft, when you had people who were excluding people because even though they met the, the, the basic gear score requirements for things and the only way that they could improve would have been to continue to go through dungeons and things like that. They would actively try and kick them from teams or they would give them a very hard time just because they hadn't hit a certain point so far and that was kind of the, the, the issue there. It was that achiever had already achieved and was then judging you and being very competitive and conf kind of confrontational purely because you hadn't achieved that goal yet even if you were trying to achieve it you know and and again this this easier maybe to handle but also putting in certain systems that, that promote the achievements and things like that and make them meaningful to mechanics and and so on can be really really taxing for for a community because especially when you're trying to grow communities when you're trying to get more people on board when you're trying to kind of promote aspects of the game or allow people to play through the entire experience then having this kind of um, floating over certain areas of the game especially when you've got things like challenge modes or dungeons or or competitive modes and things like that that's when the comparisons start that's when people will start crapping on newer players just because they've not achieved a thing yet or they've not got so far yet you know and and that can be an issue but the thing is then let's move on to the next one which we've got explorers and this is probably where i sit more than any of the others um but of, I, i'm the only place that i probably don't sit on here in with any regularity is the the killer because even though I've played Paladins on here, which is a PvP only game at the moment for the most part, um, it's it's like I much prefer to work with people and to work within a world and go and do some stuff. I'm not a big fan of PvP. I'd much prefer not to impose on people. I'd much prefer just to let them work with me in their own way. You know, everyone's got their own strengths, own ways to develop, and so that's the way that we all try and move forward with it because. You know, I uh, to begin with, with the explorer especially. You know, it tends to be stuff to do with finding out and experimenting and and exploring options. So, in regards to this kind of like, again, Guild Wars One as an example for me, the map exploration. I knew all of those maps like the back of my hand. I knew all of the ways the the to travel around, and as a result, you know that that was my thing i was i was really happy to go and explore the world and find landmarks and then also kind of experiment with the system and do crazy things with the skill builds and and stuff like that just to see if it would work yeah and so as a result you know explorers generally do fill into those two kind of things they are the people who will know the geography but it's not just that they are the people that will know the, the little tricks, the shortcuts, the, the potential glitches that you can use, the mechanics in, in a lot of different ways. They'll experiment more, even if it doesn't look like it's going to work. If it's more fun to experiment with it and see what happens, then they're more likely to do that. You know, these may very well be the people who develop um, kind of game metas. You know, they're the ones that do the the, the exploration, the, the investigation into the mechanics, the, the 
the kind of ways of building characters and things like that. But then they're not the ones to enforce it because exploring's part of the fun, trying things out, experimenting is all part of the fun. And so as a result, they don't begrudge people for having different builds as often as they might. Yeah? Obviously, with the more tricks and glitches and shortcuts kind of thing, yeah, you might be aware of them. I personally prefer not to use them because maybe that's a bit part of me that's more achiever based, but like it seems like using them firstly is something that from a lot of games nowadays would get you banned for, for using ex exploits and things like that excessively. But also, you know, I'm not playing the game the way that the developers necessarily intended it. Yeah, I'm not tackling the challenge head on. And so as a result, I personally tend to veer away from using glitches and random little exploits and things because it's it's just not as much fun. It doesn't give me the environment to explore that the is the one that I've I've supposedly been presented with. It's not the one that I've been kind of given by the game developer. Um, and so as a result, you know, I'd much prefer to just do it normally. But obviously the people who find these broken parts of games or the that work out shortcuts and things like that, they are the ones who, you know, will then make them popular amongst communities because they'll introduce them. And then because it's easier, you know, you'll have all of the others try and, and use them more. You know, this is how metas get started and then enforced. You have the explorers who have found the way that the system works, they've trialed and errored it, they've explored it, they've, they've come out with all of these things and it's a lot of fun to just try stuff out and not really be too fussed about what works super, super well, but what works best for them and how they want to use it. And then after that, it's going to be a case of, well, now that they've come up with this thing that works, potentially this thing that works very well, then it will be introduced out into the the community as a whole as more people see it and more people start using it and as a result then the killers if the the killers part of this is go, if they're going to use it then they they're going to use it to the the utmost they're going to enforce it and anyone who's not doing what they're doing well they're just shit yeah and then in regards to the achievers if it helps them achieve their goals more efficiently then and get their rewards faster then they're going to use it they're going to go do it then you've got the socializers, and we'll move on to these guys in full in a minute, but for the most part, these guys aren't too fussed about the rest of the game. Yeah, and so as a result, the the tricks and the glitches and things that might very well be introduced by explorers finding them, they're going to be used by socializers because they're not there purely to play the game. They're not really there for the game itself by default. And so as a result, if it makes their life in the game easier so that they can do more of what they want then they'll take advantage of it and now these guys tend to be kind of really really easy to to satisfy explorers that is and that's just you give them a lot to look into yeah be it game world lore be it open world environments be it things hidden in limited environments be it uh, interesting kind of mechanical systems to play with you know this is why i prefer paladins to overwatch to an extent even though I'm getting a little bit disenfranchised with some of the, the poor balancing things that they're doing, the, um, the, the card system and the way that I can modify the way that the character plays um, in Paladins is very much more to my liking because it lets me experiment. It lets me trial and error. It lets me work some stuff out. And then I, that's what I share with you guys. Um, but then, um, you know, giving them lore and story and stuff like that to dig into you know all of these things just keep an explorer happy and guess what explorers they're there to just find stuff they're there to try stuff out and as a result because they're interacting with the game world they tend not to cause as many problems overall yeah um you know they're preoccupied with just doing the things that they want to do rather than directly impacting the player base the only problem is that if there is a meta, if there are the best ways of doing things or whatever else, then chances are these are the guys that are going to find it. Now, there are going to be explorers that have different thoughts and different opinions. For instance, I'm I, my focus is much more skill aligned. And so, for instance, you give me a skill system and a build and I'm likely, if I can mess around with it a little bit and all the rest of it, then I'm far more likely to go, well... It's going to be more about 
shooting straight than it is about the skills. Yeah, for example, paladins. You know, as much as the skills make a difference, as much as all of the the um, the balance changes that they do make a huge difference, considering that it's it's very you've got lots of very different characters and things. Obviously, none of those things are going to help you in any way, shape, or form if, for instance, you're playing a Makoa but you can't hit with his hook, or you're playing a Grover but you can't hit those long range axes as you're closing in, or any of those other characters. You know, if you can't actually make the shots, if you can't actually kind of take on the role that you've decided to play and use it effectively, then you're kind of up in the air and as a result when I play around with these things I'm like well does it work for me does it work with my level of skill does it work with this does it work with that whilst there are other people who also fit into the kind of explorer kind of archetype here this this explorer category who are far more like oh no the 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 there is going to be uh, an optimal build there is going to be a numerically perfect build and so I will take that and then I will just use it. There, the thing is then though, you have the differences in skill and that kind of spans out into a much bigger discussion between that, that kind of divides the explorers to an extent where, where other personality traits are coming in and, and interacting with it. But anyway, let's get on to the last one here, the socializers. Now these guys are the ones who are more interested in community. They're the ones who probably come to a game to play with their friends and so it's more about playing with the other players or playing the game um, as part of a group than it is about playing the game just for playing the game and so as a result you know they, they these are the people who will help spread knowledge these are the people who will um, kind of add a, a human element to the interactions in the game you know these are the guys who you will see um, looking to create bigger communities be uh, and usually more high quality communities as well by managing guilds or creating role playing forums or things like that and i'm not talking about the people who are looking for numbers because in lots of these games now for both for things like clans or for things like guilds you have people recruiting on mass and they will just recruit anybody socializers aren't the people who are likely to do that. They're the people who are far more inclined towards kind of developing a guild the way the, that I did when I, I was running guilds, whereby you want to have a, a group of people who you can communicate with, who you can work with, who you can play together and have fun with, because that's what they're here for. They're not here for the numbers, they're here for the qualities of the interactions. Now, again, these guys can be kind of tricky to handle because obviously a lot of games now seem to focus kind of on two major things and then the way that those two things interact you've got the world or the plot or the or, you know whatever or the universe and then you've got the mechanics and then you've just got the the supposed narrative element where the two meet and as a result though that can uh, that can happily deal with the killers that can happily deal with achievers that can happily deal with explorers but unfortunately, because there's no human element in there, the socializers don't really have that much to do. And as a result, you know, you do have in games, you've got things like guild halls, you have things like guilds, you have um, games that, that slant towards role playing in a big way. For example, Conan Exiles, especially after the, the environment that they've had in their other games like The Secret World and, uh, and Age of Conan, the guys at Funcom take a look at Conan Exiles and they try to make sure that there's room for role play yeah and obviously within a lot of games like this there is because it's such a, such a sandbox but also they don't want to leave out other things and as a result allowing the space for the role playing and for the the socializing and and stuff like that has to be there but it it can't like overly infringe but it also can't be so small that it's it's beyond notice you know, and, and so it becomes a bit of a balancing act with socialisers because it's really hard to quantify what they want, you know, because they want interaction with other players, but it's a multiplayer game, so they're going to get that anyway, but then, you know, what do they want to cultivate it? And these guys tend to be the ones, as said, who aren't as interested in playing the game, and as a result, feedback on the game 
is something that they're not as likely to give. You know, they're willing to, to spread knowledge and, and stuff like that to, to the community or to their in, in, like immediate environment. Um, but they're not necessarily going to be the people coming up with a meta. They're not going to be the people finding bugs and glitches. They're not going to be the people um, suggesting new achievements and saying that rewards are either too good or not good enough. And they're not the people who are going to be making that big imposition on the game devs, on the game, on the other players to have their voices heard. And so as a result, the socializers can be kind of tough to, to kind of rein in because they're there just to have fun with others. And that can be great, but it can also be really kind of sucky when there's there's not much else for them to do. There's nothing else there for them to be drawn into beyond just playing the game with their friends, which might be what they want. But after a time, that's going to get stale, yeah? Because it's still going to be a, a variety thing, yeah? After a time, everyone else is going to through killing other players, through achieving things, through exploring, they're all going to progress, whilst a socializer is just going to be there with their friends. And they might progress in the game the same rate as everybody else, but their their progression in terms of interaction in regards to how well they're rewarded for playing with others and things like that might not be there. They might not have that incentive to stick around to keep playing with their friends if it's just a turn up and do the same thing as everyone else all the time, and yet you're kind of main mechanism, your main reason for coming and doing this isn't being rewarded the same way that everyone else's is. And this is where you have uh, guild systems, guild level up systems, um, boosters and rewards for playing in a party and stuff like that where you've got that social element being rewarded. Now why why did it, why have I brought this up today? Why why is is this kind of stuff important? And it's the reason I think that this this is important and that I'm quite thankful that it's it's put forward in a really succinct and easy to understand manner as well is the fact that there are an awful lot of people that want to get into games an uh, awful lot of people that want to get into game design it's a huge huge industry you've even got people like me doing game design for me and my friends um, for just sitting around a table and essentially playing things like Dungeons and Dragons um, but I'm still taking it as a as a uh, kind of person writing the adventure, person writing the experience, I'm still taking it seriously because I want to do the best that I can do and I want my friends to enjoy it and I want to enjoy it. And as a result, keeping these things in mind for pretty much any multiplayer experience is worthwhile. Getting to know your players, getting to know what they want, expanding in areas that even if you're not sure that that's what the players want because you've not heard any noise on it because it's very very quiet around that thing you know expanding it within these lines is probably a good idea um and so as a result you know games are for gamers games are for people to play and as a result whether they're a learning experience whether they're a meaningful experience whether they're some mindless shooter whether they're competitive whether they're ex you know any of these various things they should take account of all of these different types of players to one extent or another and if they don't then they're probably going to start falling to pieces in various ways now the other reason that I wanted to introduce this idea now and go through it in full now was because it relates to some other videos that I want to do in the future and so I want to be able to refer back to it um, and so as a result guys you know, I, I, where do you guys fall on on this? Do you think where whereabouts are you? Because I'm, as I said, I'm very much in anywhere other than killer because I like my rewards and my achievements. I like my challenges. Yeah, um, in the recent Warframe quest that I played with you guys, um, I was saying all the way through that it wasn't particularly challenging. I really appreciated the lore and the tone, but there wasn't much challenge, and then the reward wasn't on par with the other activities that I had done similarly yeah um, and then it, it was even it was in a much larger disparity even for the quest before that Octavia's Anthem where the, the what the quest essentially asked of me was quite significant in various ways considering how new some of the stuff was that they had put into that 
and yet the reward was still very lacking and just wasn't there. It didn't seem to pay, the, the payoff just didn't seem to be there. So my achiever part of me was sat there going, well, I'm not, not too sure about this, guys. But then, you know, socialize. I love playing with people. You know, if, if I have the opportunity to play um, a, a massively multiplayer game, an MMO with more of a living world with lots of players moving around, I'm probably going to choose that over anything else just because some of the things that the, the players and the, the community can do can be directly impactful rather than me seeing some post on a blog or on a on a, a website or forum somewhere saying that this player had done this thing with this thing in this other game that might very well be single player or very small co-op and uh, as a result you know take a look at this it was fun well yeah it was fun but I, I don't like I don't really care yeah, it didn't impact my game directly, and that's one of the things that um, I enjoy even around doing tabletop stuff, where even though it's a small group of people, like whether I'm a player or whether I'm I'm running the game, you've got that interaction going back and forth. And as a result, again, with the role playing aspect, being the socializer is very much kind of in there with it because you're having to directly interact in a two way thing with with players. So, you know, there, there's kind of where I sit, anywhere other than Killer, you know, very specific, but probably more Explorer uh, over, overall. But, you know, where do you guys sit? You know, I'd love to hear down in the comments and, you know, generally what's your experience of the others? Because obviously each one of these different kind of categories is going to perceive the others slightly differently. You know, like me coming in as someone who just wants to play the game, explore, test stuff out, see how things go, maybe get some rewards and meet, you know, make some friends, um, or play with some friends either way, then, you know, the very antisocial imposition of killers is something that, that kind of bugs me and kind of gets to me at times. But then the other way around, I can understand that a killer would probably find kind of me going, well, it doesn't matter, man, it's a game really infuriating i mean it would be it's somewhat immature of them to to maybe get so attached to something that, that has so little meaning relatively speaking but obviously it's something that's important to them and it means something to them and as a result you know i, I don't mean to take that away but at the same time and i can understand where the the frustration would be in me saying that but at the same time you know it's it's trying to allow for that perspective Anyway, this video has actually gone on longer than I expected, to, uh, expected it to, so I will get rid of that. And thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you found this talk entertaining or interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.